Hey guys, Kale from Halo Station here. Thought it was about time we did some kind of visual update for our followers to let you know that we're not dead. We've been slowly, steadily working on stuff in the background, and maybe we might have something playable soon for you guys. Conveniently, I just finished a new feature in our closed alpha, which would make a nice demo. A procedural asteroid generation. Basically, it's a random asteroid generator for mineable asteroids, which will spawn in asteroid fields around the solar system. Looks kind of cool when it runs in slow motion, so in this video we're going to see it in action and I'll explain how it works for non-techie folks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into our blank Z level full of space. These Z levels are 255 turfs wide and high, which makes for a total of just over 65,000 turfs. So they're pretty big. This is the standard Space Station 13 map size. So let's kick this generator off. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a big circle, a filled in circle, full of a placeholder turf called masks. This circle is going to form the base shape of our asteroid, which we'll modify later to make it look more random and natural. This circle has a radius of 80 turfs, which means there's a margin of about 50 turfs at the closest point between the circumference of the circle and the edge of the map. This means there'll be plenty of space for players to fly around in fighters and shuttles, exploring the outside of the asteroid. What's happening now is that points along the circumference are being chosen to morph either inwards or outwards. This is just a basic flood fill algorithm, where from the starting point on the circumference, it spreads outwards, picking turfs to either turn into space or turn into more mask turfs. As you can see, it doesn't look quite natural yet. There's all kinds of crinkly bits and sticking out bits which don't really resemble anything quite natural yet. The main goal of this stage is just to break up the outline of the circle so that there isn't a perfect curve around the edges of our asteroid. With a bit of imagination, we can start to see natural formations like bays or inlets or outcroppings or impact craters and these could be the result of gravitational erosion, strikes from meteors, collisions with other asteroids, who knows. I'm not an astrophysicist, my goal here is just to make it look believable and kinda cool. The next stage is smoothing. This works similar to erosion, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to loop over the edges of the asteroid, we're going to remove all the crinkly bits, we're going to smooth them out, and we're going to make it start to actually look like a natural formation. Now in previous stages, we saved all the turfs that are along the circumference, or now the edge of our asteroid, as well as all the turfs nearby, and so to speed up the smoothing algorithm, we're just going to loop over all of those turfs. So as you can see, 24,000 map turfs there, which we'll be looping over instead of the whole 65,000 on the whole Z level. After the final pass, as you can see here, we start to apply the smoothing. So you can see the crinkly bits are starting to disappear, they're smoothing out, and everything's starting to look like an actual, natural rock formation. So, there are three passes specifically for the smoothing anymore, and it starts to look a little bit flat, and we start to lose definition, and we start to lose all these interesting outcrops and incrops and bits. This algorithm works by first generating random noise around the asteroid. Similarly to our smoothing stage, several passes are made over the noise, gradually changing turfs to match their most common neighbour. The next step generates caves inside the asteroid using Baytool Cellular Automata algorithm, originally written by Zuher. If you look carefully, you can see the outline of our original circle here. This is a quirk of the algorithm due to the order that turfs are getting processed and saved. The final step, obviously, spawns ore veins throughout the asteroid, as you can see. Halo Station has 41 unique mineable ores, containing combinations of 32 different metallic elements. 
These ores are located in asteroids and planets spread around the solar system and can be mined by players with the right equipment and ships. The ore and vein sprites here are semi-random with different color sets and we have a largely automated process for creating and updating them together because there are so many. Later on, we're going to add other gatherable resources such as ice or crystal asteroids, asteroids made of different type of rock, or liquid and gas pockets inside asteroids, which will require special care and equipment to extract. Players will also be able to gather gas from gas giants, which may spawn in system. Depending on player goals, you may want to pursue specific resources in order to create powerful alloys with unique effects such as deflecting sensors, blocking radio waves, or diffusing plasma hits. Alternatively, you may pursue whatever valuable resources you can find in order to make the most money by trading them to NPCs. What I'm going to do now is save the generated asteroid map so we can open it up in DreamMaker and have a look. I'm going to give it a name. Now it's going to take about 30 to 60 seconds to finish, so I'm going to leave it alone for a bit and come back later. Okay, here we go. Now to load it up in DreamMaker. I'll just remove the area overlays so we can see this properly. And now up here you can see a mini-map with the generated asteroid, including its general shape, and scattered throughout at caves and ore veins. These blue crosses mark points on the circumference, which may have morphed inwards or outwards during generation. They're only being shown here for debug and testing. Thanks for watching. Sign up on our website for more updates and stay tuned for an eventual release date. We're always on the lookout for contributors, so if you have any ability or want to learn something like mapping, coding, spriting, lore, or game design, then let us know.